Dear all, I welcome you today for our second webinar on restarting travel and tourism after the COVID-19 pandemic. Yesterday, we talked about responses, best practices and solutions on a global scale. Today, our focus is on Europe and how to work together for more effective and coordinated approaches in travel and tourism during this ongoing crisis and beyond. Our remarkable speakers have uh, valuable knowledge and expertise. All are involved and engaged in forming policies and providing solutions. Europe, as we know, is the top destination globally for travel and tourism, receiving about half of arrivals uh, worldwide. Uh, worldwide. But its uh, travel and tourism sector has been hit uh, very hard. One billion arrivals are considered lost in Europe in 2020, according to the latest estimates by the Europe, European Travel Commission, uh, a drop by more than 60% compared to 2019. Um, this is a great loss also in uh, revenues. More than 22 million jobs in Europe are affected more or less. Several tourism experts predict a slow recovery that can last even up to five years. Tourism represents more than the 10% of Europe's uh, GDP and employment. Especially in South uh, Europe, tourism uh, contributes more than 20% directly and indirectly in national economies and several destinations make a living almost only out of tourism, including local economies, but also whole areas and countries that only recently recovered from economy rises such as Greece. Right now, we are experiencing the second wave of the pandemic. No one can predict what will happen over the next months and 2021 still seems to be an unstable year. Recent news about effective vaccine uh, is encouraging, but we must remain alert. We still have a long way to go until we can feel and be safe. And a lot has to be done for restarting the tourism ecosystem. The European Parliament has pushed for immediate adequate measures for both coordinated response regarding traveling in the EU, as well as for uh, supporting the whole tourism industry. We did so um, through continuous interventions to the European Commission and the Council as well, as with the resolution for tourism, which has, uh, was voted uh, uh, last June and included all our proposals. We have urgent issues that we cannot delay to deal with, such as the much needed support to businesses, especially the SMEs whose uh, survival is at stake we must ensure timely financial liquidity to avoid bankruptcies to prevent the weakest business to be bought or shut down and of course our main concern is to protect millions of jobs and how uh, household uh, incomes that depend on travel transportation and the hospitality industry European funds have been secured for recovery, but it's up to the member states to make best use of available funding based on their needs and planning. I'm looking forward to your views and proposals for safeguarding, restarting, and future uh, for travel and tourism in Europe for as long as this crisis lasts and beyond. Um, I would like to introduce the video um, intervention from Alexandros Vasilikos, President of the Hellenic Chamber of Hotels and also member of the Executive Committee of Hotrek. Alexandros has been a leading figure in representing the Greek hospitality sector for several years with a tremendous ability in managing crisis and forming strategies. Let's hear about the main issues and priorities that Alexandros Vasilikos points out. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar Support SMEs and Employment to Survive and Overcome the Crisis and Restart Travel and Tourism in Europe for 2021. I believe that the title of the webinar covers it all, and I could pretty much stop my message here. Nevertheless, I would like to thank MEP Elena Kundura for the invitation and wish you all a productive panel and discussion. 
we are facing an unprecedented challenging context across Europe and the world. Hospitality is facing a very tough winter ahead. When we reopen, it will be under severe restrictions. The next phase of lockdown is happening in a context where businesses were already vulnerable after a year of bleeding. In some countries like Greece, we have to bear in mind that this crisis comes on top of economic austerity that lasted a decade, already testing the limits of companies in the market. Overall, we do not expect to see significant growth in hospitality before spring, since major markets like MICE and City Break do not look promising. Within that context, it is very important to set the goals and assess them in the right order. Like we have put forward since the beginning of the crisis, there needs to be a perfect equilibrium between survival tools and long-term planning. We cannot have one without the other. In the short run, businesses will need additional support if they are to survive and keep jobs alive. We need government measures to support companies' cash flow and keep businesses afloat. Additional liquidity measures are still re required to help fund companies during the coming months as a result of the cash flow lost due to the COVID-19 related restrictions. Continued use of extension of unemployment supports. And beyond that, we need medium run support so that the sector can be revived and play its part in rebuilding the economy. For example, implementing and extending the VAT cut coupled with extensive promotion of tourism and hospitality. In the long run, the recovery will take years that much we know. That's why we need long-term financial support for our businesses, in particular to help them on the digital and sustainable transformation. We do care about these issues. They are essential to bounce back, but we need the support in that direction. I strongly believe that the sector was already aware and that the crisis will act as an accelerator in order to reach goals in that direction much faster than initially anticipated. Upskilling and reskilling are essential with a bottom-up approach, meaning that the companies will have to say what their needs are and the member states must include in their recovery plans trainings for the hospitality sector. The EU has shown an unprecedented speed and magnitude of decisions. This needs to continue and we need to work together, as we do, in order to set rules at a European level as far as travel coordination is concerned. Our sector, like many others in the tourism ecosystem, is looking forward to the adoption of a European testing protocol for travellers, as well as a common approach to quarantine practices to all modes of transport. The travel and tourism industry needs reliable and efficient testing to replace quarantine requirements and other travel restrictions in order to restore consumer confidence in travelling. The travel and tourism industry has made tremendous efforts to adopt and implement health and safety protocols in a very short time to guarantee the safety of customers. But all this is in vain if travelers can travel due to different and rapidly changing independent travel restrictions at a national level, such as quarantine requirements and movement conditions. In closing, I wish to emphasize on the need to bring customer confidence back. If companies are open, they are obliged to follow very strict health and safety protocols. Therefore, consumers should enjoy our services happily and securely. We must be giving the tools to survive and plan ahead so that hospitality may look forward and continue to deliver a great and sustainable experience to millions of guests. While serving the core values of Europe, of its people, of its culture, of its economy. Once again, thank you, Elena Kundura, for the invitation, and I wish you all a productive discussion. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Vasilikos mentioned the need uh, for a perfect uh, equilibrium between support for survival and long-term planning. Governments need to spend money now to support uh, cash flow sorted support than employment. In the long term, investments are needed for the sustainable and digital transformation 
And last, he pointed out that a common testing protocol um, all over Europe to replace guarantine is essential, something that I will definitely uh, uh, say that uh, find, uh, I, I agree completely because guarantine is not uh, uh, something to prevent. Guarantine is coming after uh, the symptoms uh, of uh, the people that they have unfortunately be contaminated. Uh, let's start with um, uh, Istvan Wicheli, member of the European Parliament from uh, Hungary, representing the group of the Progressive Alliance of uh, Socialists and Democrats. I'm sure you already know him as he has been fighting for tourism for many years in the European Parliament. He has been appointed special ambassador to the UNWTO and I have had the honor to work very closely with him in the last year. As Istvan is also vice uh, chair of the Committee on Transport and Tourism and member of the Tourism Task Force Steering Group. Um, Istvan, I have to say, uh, he will not be with us for the whole webinar because of other work-related duties. So Istvan, thank you so much for being here and let's start with your analysis that sets the sense for this webinar. Thank you so much, uh, dear Elena, dear colleagues, uh, Lola, George, uh, uh, Bauza Diaz, Ramon, uh, if you are here, thank you so much uh, to be together with you. Let me express to give my appreciation uh, to Elena for this event today. And you, you have to know that Elena is one of my best colleagues uh, uh, in the constant fight to put tourism uh, on that place it deserves. Uh, we are in different political groups, but for tourism, uh, our aims are common and we share the same vision of uh, uh, vision for European uh, tourism in the future. This term, during the past year, we have reached a lot together, uh, but of course it's not enough. We had successes uh, and the European Parliament uh, has been the most progressive member of the institutional Brussels bubble. Our political groups have positioned papers on tourism. A joint motion resolution was voted before summer. And finally, in the budget of 2021, we voted for a preparatory action on 2.5 million euro and we accepted a budget line or uh, also uh, in the next year budget, uh, which is a uh, historical steps for the uh, European tourism, but I know very well it's not enough. But you have to know that uh, the tourism uh, is a member state competency. It means uh, in the European institutions, uh, we have lots of fights uh, to ask the colleagues, the council, and also the commission, and sometimes also in the European parliament, uh, to ask the colleagues uh, to support uh, the tourism, uh, to give uh, much uh, attention, to give money. And uh, <clears throat> for example, that's why it's interesting. Uh, we could uh, create one preparatory action to have a crisis manage, mechanism uh, uh, structure uh, the next uh, years. Uh, and now we are waiting for the commission and the council again and again. Uh, as the last years, uh, several times, the political actions, the political statement uh, was uh, were clear from the parliament, but we had to wait for the commission and for the council to support uh, what we discussed, agreed, and we voted in the parliament. During the past year, all tourism-related positions and the budget-related questions were voted by more than two-thirds majority of the MEPs, which covered almost all the political groups. And I remember six years ago, it wasn't the same situation in the parliament. So it's a, it's a new thing, which is good for us, uh, which will not uh, solve all the problems today under the crisis, but which will be important in three, four, five years later. Um, 
dear colleagues, uh, I'm passionate and the long time fighter, uh, you know me, and Elena told you, let me describe from another angle, but that we need three main pillars for tourist development in European level. First, we need a coordinated approach for travel and tourism. How to manage the border control and keep Schengen area existing. The Commission presented a good proposal in September. Now it's November. So the proposal was in September that the European Parliament have already told in its resolution how to facilitate travel. The Council during the German presidency tried to, did, to do the lot, but the real effective coordination is missing on the European level. There are several positive suggestions are on the negotiation table. For example, rapid COVID test shame in main travel hubs has not been involved in the EU policies. The second one for the recovery and the resiliation period, we need crisis management mechanism with direct funds and financial sources to the sector. After our last plenary, we have the budget to develop the mechanism. There are programs, special loans for member states like the SURE program, which can be used for employment possibilities. And we, the parliament, asked the, the, committee, uh, the commission uh, to put the tourism inside the SURE program. The member states presented their needs and the commission decided whether the aims are in line with the recovery. So we will turn to the commission as tourist task force and trunk committee to give us the measures how part of this program used in tourism industry. In the middle of the second wave of COVID, I'm asking the commission uh, to edit a second round of this program. And the third one, stronger governance on tourism. Long time European strategy and EU Marshall Plan is needed. More and structural cooperation uh, within the EU institutions. My approach is to create an European tourism union. Please uh, taste this uh, uh, brand, European tourism union. Uh, we did the same uh, in my second committee. Uh, the, we started to create the European Health Union. And no, it's a, uh, uh, it's a good uh, example because the Commission last week started to prepare the first steps under the European Health Union. No, we have to push to create the European Tourism Union. And uh, that's why I'm here together with you to ask you to support it in the NGOs, uh, uh, in the stake, uh, around the stakeholders in the parliament and also in the commission and the member states governments. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, 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 as uh, special ambassador of the UNWTO, I always uh, ask the two big organizations, uh, the WTTC, uh, personally, uh, Lula, uh, for example, and the UNWTO uh, to push the European member states and the governments uh, to give more chance to survive on the European level for the tourism. So, dear colleagues, thank you so much to be together with you. I'm really sorry, as I mentioned to Elena, I could not stay with you more time. Uh, you can count on me on our common fights and let's put, it, put tourism back on track. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you, Elena. Thank you so much, Istvan. Um, I will keep uh, what you stressed out that tourism must take the place it deserves in Europe, and the European Parliament is fighting united. But it's not enough, and we have to convince the Council and the Commission to provide funding and support. Uh, you also stressed that the uh, importance of the preparatory action on a crisis management mechanism, which is a very important first step. Thank you so much for that. And uh, for you, I know that we need the three pillars, coordinated um, border control, which is not enough now. The second is the crisis management mechanism with resources from the EU budget. And the third is stronger governance, uh, an EU Marshall plan 
a European Tourism Union. Thank you so much, uh, Istvan. Uh, I would like now to welcome my dear colleague, Jose Ramon Bauze Diaz, member of the European Parliament from Spain, representing a Renew Europe group, and also member of the TRAN Committee and the Tourism Task Force Steering Group. Jose Ramon has a deep understanding of the benefits of tourism for regions since he was president of the uh, Balearic Islands for many years before coming uh, to Brussels. He has uh, been very active in promoting changes for the benefit of tourism in the uh, EU and have strongly engaged in drafting the two European Parliament resolutions that we vote for tourism, the first for Thomas Cook crisis in October 2019, and the second regarding the pandemic last June. Please, Jose Ramon, sir, uh, your first thoughts with us uh, on this crisis, the lessons uh, learned, and how we move on. Thank you very much. First of all, Elena, it's a pleasure to be with you. Don't believe everything that she has said. Something of that is true, that I'm pres I have the former president of the Baroque Islands, but no, no more things, because we are very good friends, and everything that she must say is a little bit bigger. But anyway, thank you so much for your invitation. So sorry for my delay, because I have been in, uh, in a working group with my Renew Europe group, and this is uh, what, what things happen when you know, uh, Elena, with the parliament in this situation, everything is with different platforms. And anyway, I start with my thoughts and I, I am at your disposition for everything you may, you may, you may uh, change, making uh, interviews change. Then, everyone, recognize that the tourism sector has been one of the hardest hit industry by the coronavirus pandemic and the resulting global restriction on travel. We all know that. And we just need to have a brief look at the figures in Europe to observe the dramatic situation for the industry. An industry that is crucial for our European economy and especially in countries like Greece, Italy, or Spain. We all know that in the previous crisis, the global European crisis, one of the more important topics that made possible to get out of the crisis was because of the help of the tourism sector. Without the tourism sector, it's absolutely sure that our get out of the crisis should need more and more years that we did it. Then, in this case, the COVID crisis has devastated all the different countries. In special, I will just um, uh, point it some of my what is happening in Spain, tourism industry, and the sector is absolutely dramatic uh, damage. I would like to share with you some of the figures to help you understand this magnitude. Just only in June of the 2020, this year, just around 200,000 visitors arrived in Spain. And this is less than the 19th person than the previous year, 2019. This summer was the most catastrophic summer season in the last 50 years in Spain. In my country, the sector has lost 27 million visitors and 28 billion in renew in revenue sorry in the first half of the year compared with the same period last year if we look at the Balearic islands which is heavily dependent on tourism direct uh, directly and indirectly the situation is absolutely bad it's the worst situation we have ever seen in our life and this is the thing that for example, here in the Balearics, the decreasing is more than 98% compared with the last year. Moreover, the second wave, the travel restriction and the new lockdown suggest that things will not improve during the second half of the year. And this means that millions of businesses and jobs across Europe, in fact, are absolutely in risk. It's said that more than 6 million people has lost their jobs in the last month. But we can do, what can you do for that for the European institutions to help in the sector? We need to work absolutely closely with national governments in order to restart travel and tourism as soon as possible. Our countries may know that, Greece, Italy, Spain, we know, but the form, the way that some of the governments or the governance has done things 
is absolutely opposite. I won't talk about politics things, but I just want to point on the table my point of view. We cannot afford to wait until have a vaccine. We all know, I know I am a pharmacist. I can talk with the two heads, uh, but we cannot wait until a vaccine is in the table because basically we don't know, we don't know, sorry, when they will take place and the sector needs to be reactivated as soon as we can. Hotels, bars, restaurants, travel agency, airlines, buses and coaches companies are absolutely that much and they are not on time to, to, to be held. I fully believe that we can continue traveling under the COVID-19 circumstances in a safe way as long as we take the appropriate, appropriate measures. To the same, it's crucial to adopt coordinated and comprehensive measures to be implemented by all member states of the union. And when I say all member states, is that we have to be coordinated in the decision. All of us are taking different um, ways of communication, travel uh, by plane, for example. I, in the case, Elena, me and you, uh, we need uh, uh, the, 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 the air companies for, for travel. My personal experience is that in some countries, some of the governments decided to measure the frontal temperature. Some of them decided to put uh, to, to, to ask for PCR on arriving on, on the, the landing uh, places. In my country, sadly, and I must say sadly, no one has said anything about what to do with the PCR. We all know what happened with the, um, with the 13th of May um, decisions that the commission put on the table. It was not uh, decisions to be, to be adopted. It just was something to, to put on the table. And the government should decide which one of them they took to the, to the no, uh, local government. What does that mean? That if, for example, we had we put a decision on the table, we take decision on the tourism task force, we took decision by the parliament, but finally the commission just say, this is something that you can do, but you are not on the obligation to do that. Nobody will do that because they are not being pressured and any country will take the measures that he decides to be done. For example, Germany, Britain, in, the, in August, they decided to put a quarantine on. And in the case of UK, we didn't know anything, anything at all, because it's one decision from one day to the other one. It's what happened. And more of the decision as not by the evidence of the scientific decision, not because of the epidemiological decision. It was just political decision in order to avoid that people from, for example, UK fly to another destination, as is Italy, Greece, Spain, or other one. Was this happen that the market closed down? Absolutely. And many, many reservations. I must take, must talk uh, by the Balearicans, for example. I had some friends, neighbors, one of them, one of my neighbors are from Britain and they said, Jose Ramon, do you know anything about what the UK government has decision taken? Because we don't know anything at all. And what happened in the, the hotels, absolutely in one minute, they closed up the reservation, not them, but the, the guests and the visitors, just because they were afraid uh, what about what would be happening out of the UK borders. This is so bad for us, absolutely. And we had to take decisions coordinated because if we don't do that, what happens is that people will be afraid not only to fly, but to arrive to the final touristic destination in order to spend their holidays. And now, what is the commission saying? They are only making some suggestions because what happened in the 13th of May 
was just suggestion, no obligation, no something that they should decide. I think the commission, it, obviously, the, the European Commission, they don't have the competences, but they have the formal position in order to try that the other uh, member states state decision in a horizontal, transversal decision. I think we had to do many, many things. I absolutely share, sure, and you know quite good, Elena, that we are working so hard in that issue in our trunk committee. But sadly, our decision is just vote, are they vote, but no more than that in the commission or in the council. Then the trunk committee, and especially the tourism task force, have adopted several initiatives on tourism. And we have also addressed several letters to the EU, EU commissioners and ambassadors, which urges them to adopt measures. However, as I'm afraid to, they have not achieved what we have expected, unfortunately, we had to move on on the same way. The political will and the political will and commitment of the European Commission and the Council have not been enough. And today, eight months later, the pandemic started in Europe. We still do not have coordinated measures for travel at the EU level. And finally, I conclude. Uh, my introduction by saying that the financial help is absolutely important, of course, but it's crucial for the sector and it's more clear that the tourism has to be part of the European funds and national recovery plans. Elena, you and me has been fighting for the first day of being MEPs in order, yes, to put one coin, one cent of euro on the tourism final I don't know, final funds, but budget line, just one euro. How is it possible that if we, in the touristic industry, we put on the table, on the economy, almost 20, no, 12.5 or even 15 of our GDP, and we uh, create more than 20 directly or indirectly places for working. How is it possible that if obviously Everybody, even including the president of the commission, Ursula von der Leyen, that he has said that tourist and uh, travel uh, sector has been the most damage, damage. How is it possible that even one euro is put on the table on the final budget uh, line? That is what we have to do, the politics, to fight, to fight in order to get it. But we have several institutions we all know that, but maybe some of the people who is looking at us, they only think that we have a big in European institution, but we have the parliament, the council and the commission. You must know that we all together, in this case, in fact, from the European parliament are working together to help the tourism sector. Uh, Elena, I must say that, thank you so much for your invitation. Uh, we all, uh, work in the same issue, even with different point of view, because we work we working in different uh, political parties. But even that, we are on the same line, and I think we get it. If we do to if we do it together, we'll get it finally. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ramon. I have to say that uh, you all uh, noticed that I, I didn't exaggerate in my presentation. My modest friend, he's really very good. He knows very well about uh, tourism. He pointed out the dramatic situation of the sector, especially for the touristic crisis. He correctly uh, reminded us that tourism was an accelerator for growth in previous crises. Tourism helped us overcome past crisis. Now, this was the most catastrophic summer in uh, 50 years because of the collapse of tourism. The numbers he presented to us are really enormous. Uh, the restarting of tourism, he stressed um, that waiting for a vaccine and is, uh, has to be done. It will be late for many sectors, so we must learn to travel safely with uh, coordinated measures by all member states. 
Um, but the European framework was not enough, despite the constant pressure by the European Parliament and the task force for tourism, because decisions were based on politics and not epidemiological data. The political will of the Commission and the Council were simply not enough. I have to add as well, uh, my dear friend, that um, uh, suggestions and not obligations uh, of uh, uh, the Commission made a huge uh, confusion, I would say. Every member state uh, um, uh, uh, provided completely different uh, measures. Uh, safety and security is the most important thing. Uh, common uh, gene protocols are uh, the best and definitely I totally agree with you that we have to uh, cooperate the three institutions in order to overcome this uh, um, unprecedented crisis, which is the pandemic. Thank you so much. We so um, let's continue uh, with uh, Lola Una Gardenas. I shall uh, introduce you. Uh, Lola Una Gardenas is the Vice President of the World Travel and Tourism uh, Council, WTTC, responsible for government's affair. Lola is an expert in strategic analysis and strategic advice with long-time experiences in lobbying on travel and tourism, transport and environment policies to private and public sector organizations. And she has been working closely with the travel industry, policymakers, consumer groups, and other European stakeholders. Lola, we are looking forward to your analysis and suggestions regarding the impact of this crisis on travel and tourism. Thank you, Elena. I think we had a presentation and why it works, because we're all used to this uh, new normal with technology, so we, we, we understand uh, the, the issues. So thank you very much for your leadership. Thank you very much for inviting us. It's really a, a privilege to share a panel by Ishvan Isiascon, but uh, UNWTO and uh, with Jose Ramon. And uh, you know, you thank you for your passion, your your commitment, and uh, and your determination to actually really raise awareness of the importance of, of uh, our industry. I don't know if uh, we have the, the slides uh, to be able to put them up, but uh, if not, I just can get. Uh, kick off uh, without the slides you just let me know so you know for those that don't know WTTC we were created uh, 30 years ago and uh, to speak with one voice in 185 countries so we represent the global private travel and tourism sector and our members are a bit over 200 CEOs from the world and from all industries and all the the, the, all the different sectors in the ecosystem. So from airlines, GDSs, airports, uh, tour operators, digital players, travel companies, so the whole value chain of travel and tourism. And uh, Europe, of course, is very important, but we are also represented uh, in, in Asia and the Americas in a quite um, balanced way. So uh, besides representing the sector, what we do is we actually, uh, you know, economic research on the terms of on the impact of travel and tourism in a country's GDP. So that's how we know that in 2019, uh, travel and tourism contributed to 10.3% of global GDP. And for nine years, uh, and that has been the trend, we outpaced the economy. And uh, of course, that is now going to change. We supported uh, one out of 10 jobs in the planet. And out of the new jobs for the five years, one out of four of all the industries and all sectors, one out of four was in our sector. So it's really, really important, uh, uh, you know, and uh, it's really important to highlight the, 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 the weight of the industry. And so we had a slide with a top uh, a ranking of the top 15 countries in Europe uh, in terms of GDP. And of course, Greece being one of them and uh, Hungary number 15, I think it was Spain as well. And so numbers speak for themselves. And as you mentioned, uh, you know, the impact, of course, is going to be extensive in countries with the largest uh, travel and tourism GDP from the from the pandemic, which, of course, has devastated uh, the, the sector. So we have been doing a lot of work as well in quantifying the impacts of the of this unprecedented crisis. Uh, there you go. 
we have the, the presentation there. So if you just like move to the next slide, please. So we can go through the next slide. It's the... If you go down, you scroll down a little bit on the past, uh, on the global recovery, the economic impact. So we're, what we're saying is like, we have been doing a lot of work in quantifying the impact of the, of the crisis. So we started, I think in March with like 50 million jobs at risk. We moved as the uh, pandemic was evolving to 75. And according to our latest estimations from last week, actually, we are at 142 million jobs being impacted globally. And uh, we had a worst case scenario of 197 million jobs at risk by the end of the year. Now the number has decreased to 174. Why? Because we saw some um, domestic uh, recover uh, in China mainly. And so of course this is very good news, but not enough since we believe, unfortunately, uh, we are heading into this worst case scenario of 174 million jobs uh, lost uh, by the end of the year if we don't get the right support and we don't take the right decisions. So if we could move to the uh, economic recovery slide, if not, I'll just continue. So, you know, we always say that to understand the present and especially to look into the future, we need to learn from the past. And uh, we have analyzed a number of crises. We focus actually on, on two situations that we saw, 9-11 and uh, the 2008 financial crisis, 9-11, it took years to recover. There was a lack of coordination, a lack of coordinate, uh, collaboration with the private sector. And uh, we still have even different protocols at airports. And, uh, and so uh, in the 2008 financial crisis, thanks to the coordinated approach and thanks to the collaboration, public, private, the recovery was much faster. And we were able to actually al allow us to recover in 18 months. So that is the next one, the, past the, the next slide. So um, the, the one with the charts, very exciting charts. And, and so uh, there, like you see the, the two situations on the top left uh, chart. And, uh, and then on the top right, it's like, uh, it's the G20 economy. So we really think that what happens in G20 has a direct impact in the world. And, uh, and you know, last lesson learned, China, it's like if you look at the bottom uh, charts, like for the last 20 years in the economy in China, they had a situation in 2003. And so that was the SARS outbreak. Now, of course, we're in a very different situation, but still they recovered fast and faster despite not having a vaccine. And they were able to isolate the people infected and, and put the right protocols in place. So what we're saying is that we really need countries to as we were mentioning before the kickoff of the, of the event today, to change the mindset, to change the narrative. Of course, we need to focus on containing the spread, paramount, that's number one priority for all countries, but we need to learn to live and coexist with the virus. And so, you know, we need to find a way to save the Christmas season. We need to find a way you know, to collaborate with the health authorities and uh, and then maybe with ECDC to provide a mapping of, of tourism flows for December and, and help them with the risk assessment. It's like, what is it that they need from us in order to resume travel? And so, um, you know, in terms of the recovery and, and how we see travel starting, we always speak and we've been advocating for four principles to recovery. Number one, as Ishvan mentioned, we need a coordinated approach internationally, of course, at the European level, that's the region, but then also internationally, because without coordination, it's going to be very hard to, to recover. So we're calling governments to really remove barriers to travel. So we have suggested that we replace the blanket quarantines for you know quick, cheap, low cost and effective testing before departure via a European and international testing protocol. So this is going to allow that only negative board the planes and so we avoid exporting the virus so if you test positive you should be put in quarantine in your country of origin and if you test negative you should not be put in quarantine and you need to a, be able to arrive without problems to your destination so of course uh, we are also advocating for the implementation of international air corridors between countries or cities with similar epidemiological situations so especially 
amongst the maybe the major hubs, you know, London, New York, Frankfurt, and uh, Paris, Madrid. And so, you know, when looking uh, into the, and this is number two, uh, in the seamless traveler experience of the journey, we have come a long way. Uh, but, um, you know, probably COVID has accelerated two agendas, one of them being the, 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 the innovation, the, the, the digital one, the touchless. So we, we see, of course, two phases of so before the vaccine and after the vaccine. So, of course, after it will be easier once uh, we have the certainty and the confidence uh, that it is safe. Uh, but before the vaccine, as I said, we cannot afford not to travel and we really need to use technology, uh, biometrics, the touchless, and, and the apps for contact tracing to help us recover faster. So, of course, number three, very important, a set of uniform protocols across the world, simple to understand for both people and businesses so that it can be implemented in a simple way to put them in place. We need to rebuild traveler confidence. We need to make sure that they feel it is safe to travel. And, and so, um, We've worked together on, on some safe uh, travels and protocols together with you and WTO as well. And uh, but we really need to have consistency so that we can rebuild trust. Last but not least, of course, continued government support. We need to, of course, support the 80% of the sector, which are SMEs. And uh, we need fiscal stimulus, incentives, protection of workers. and. Uh, you know, last slide and, and moving into the future, you know, like thinking and you asked me like, okay, how did you see the future of, of travel? So we launched a report, uh, I think it was on the International Tourism Day, and uh, we took a holistic approach to, to explore the, what, what, what are the trends, what are the things, you know, from a perspective of the traveler. And so uh, these days, number one is like travelers are looking for the familiar, the trusted. So people are really concerned of getting stuck in a destination because of the changing policies and uh, that could let them, you know, they need to quarantine. And uh, and so that was really a rise in, in uh, domestic, as we know, and regional travel in the short term. So I think uh, Oliver Wyman's report said that 58% of travelers said they would actually take primarily domestic trips for the rest of 2020. And uh, so they're probably, you know, health and safety are paramount, of course, and we will see an increased focus on, on these. And uh, in that sense, we will see the acceleration, as I mentioned, of contactless, touchless, and uh, the seamless travel experience and, and technology will play a, a predominant uh, role in there. And so, um, Consumers are expecting uh, more technology. So cybersecurity will become more important. Interestingly, and well, we, we know that 69% of people who use video conferencing for the first time uh, is expected to continue. And 66% uh, of consumers are using less cash and moving towards more contactless solutions. So really, technology will play a crucial role in, in, in how we see uh, travel moving. And uh, of course, uh, this is bringing a lot of opportunities, but uh, we really need to make sure as well that no one is left behind and uh, that will be crucial. And last but not least, you know, sustainability. COVID has accelerated the sustainability agenda. And, and so uh, I think 58% of consumers are thinking more about the environment since COVID. So the public awareness uh, of the environment has certainly increased. And uh, businesses are also uh, facing some growing scrutiny for both their environmental track record and their support for diversity and inclusion, uh, which actually play a very important role. If you think about 54% of the employment in the sector are women compared to the 39 from the global economy. And so uh, these are really key issues. So, you know, we need to prepare for the future and uh, but we need to work together and no one wants to give up traveling. So it is part of our DNA. Uh, but as I said, we need to work together to rebuild the trust. And um, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Lola. Um, you stressed out the importance of uh, tourism for the European economy and uh, globally 174 million jobs. Uh, globally are lost a shocking number. Uh, WDTC has made an analysis of previous crises and uh, proposed that the uh, coordinated way to learn and live safely 
with the virus will help the recovery and resume travel. So four principles are important. Coordinated removal of uh, blanket guarantees through testing before departure, enhance existing seamless traveler journey experience, adopt common uh, hygienic and uh, safety protocols, and last but not least, strong government support, especially for SMEs and workers. Um, so you, you also pointed out the term, uh, the long-term challenges such as sustainability and gender issues. So I'll keep this from your uh, uh, statement and I will uh, continue with um, uh, George Alas, whom I had the pleasure of working very closely with uh, him during my term as a Greek Minister of Tourism between 2015-2019. George Yalas has the secret, he was the Secretary General of Tourism Development in the Ministry of Tourism of Greece with an uh, extensive work on policies for tourism growth and as well as a strong presence in international fora, events and travel exhibitions. Today, George Yalas is a tourism expert collaborating with the United Nations World Tourism Organization and also with several Greek stakeholders of public and private sector. George, please share with us uh, your views and suggestions on the priorities that this crisis had uh, highlighted for tourism and travel. Hello again. Um, it's a pleasure, Elena. Uh, Elena uh, said it uh, almost everything. We work together and uh, we share the common experiences and actually good work. Uh, so uh, I would like to say hello from uh, sunny Athens weather. This is one of the reasons, apart from the good work that we've done for so many years, that tourism has grown uh, in such heights the last years because the weather is sunny. 22 degrees, so if it has not been COVID pandemic, uh, we would have here tourists and in a long season, in a long season. This is to mention is that during all these uh, the world and uh, visiting countries from and countries through uh, through the internet. George, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm so sorry, George. We are losing you. Yeah. Okay. Is it okay now? Uh, probably yes. Probably a problem with the with the connection. Yes. Okay. Please continue. Uh, I would say. Okay. Is it okay now? Okay. Uh, I was thinking that during, uh, as I said, during the, all these uh, teleworking conferences around the world. Talk talking from different countries, I was feeling like uh, uh, we are in like in the Eurovision Song Contest, that everybody would keep points uh, to the points that they would like to, 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 to share with. Uh, so uh, uh, from Greece, now today we give uh, 12 points, du Japon, to tourism and Europe. So it means that we need to, uh, to, 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 to go to solutions and uh, to go to uh, measures that would give uh, advantage to uh, Europe as a tourism destination. It was something that uh, it was within the strategy uh, of uh, European, the European tourism uh, strategy in institutions for advance and do more uh, uh, because of the COVID and after the COVID. Uh, I'm not a politician anymore. I'm not in a political position and uh, 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 I work again in, with the private sector, and I understand again more uh, the, the, the fears and the interests and the uh, the anxiety of, of all the people, especially in tourism, of course. Uh, uh, I saw before from uh, Lola's presentation, like Croatia and Hungary and Spain, and all these countries that are must more and more most dependent on tourism. What I would like to say is that um, it, it seems that uh, uh, the situation, what we knew before, and I would like to stress on that, what we knew before on tourism, before the pandemic, like BC, like before COVID, I mean, not, uh, is uh, 
quite, it's completely different of what we see AC, which is after COVID. With this un, uh, unprecedented pandemic and situation, everything has changed. And because tourism might be resilient, but it's also very susceptible to these changes. So it's very difficult. And now it's, it, it's the situation that it has collapsed, especially in countries. And uh, I would like to, uh, I, I will speak about Europe and uh, because now we are speaking on a European level and later uh, about my country, Greece. So we need to restart tourism in Europe. This is the, 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 the situation. This is the topic of the, of the um, discussion today. And we need, we need to have three, three things in mind. First, first one, and uh, I quite agree because uh, uh, most of the, of, of the things that I would like to mention today have been said before by Lola today because of the WDDC and in your webinar yesterday that everybody presented measures and I quite, I, I mostly agree with them. So I, I'm trying to, uh, uh, to, 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 to uh, summarize and I'm trying to put my view on that. So we need, we need to do three things. First, we need to respond. And this is, which means what are the urgent challenges and how we can support the industry to be ready for tourism again. The second one is to kickstart after we respond and after we find the, 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 the answers uh, a step forward is, and uh, we need to kickstart. How do we encourage domestic tourism when the time is right? And how do we encourage international tourism when the time is right? Uh, I was uh, uh, listening and watching carefully yesterday the webinar and Talib Rifai uh, said that First, we need to encourage and start from domestic tourism. We cannot have high hopes and uh, we cannot uh, uh, target uh, international tourists uh, right away. So we need to move step by step. And then the third thing is we need to reimagine. We need to rethink. How do we create a tourism sector that generally gives back more than it takes uh, to Europe, to our countries? to our societies? And how do we work together to manage the visitor growth and flow so that all our communities and people benefit? So we need to respond, we need to prepare, to kickstart, and we need to reimagine. We need to think out of the box and we need to create something new for tourism because the, the economy, the society, the environment, everything uh, had changed. Even the president of the United States changed. So we need to, we will see whole new geopolitical things happening. Um, okay, uh, I'm, I've been working for UNWTO for one year now. It, it, it has been a great uh, honor for me. Uh, I could not travel. This is the, the bad thing. This is uh, what we enjoyed and what we did during our work, our work in the ministry in Greece, but now we cannot travel. Uh, UNWTO has, uh, WTDC has uh, provided some uh, guidelines, some priorities, extensive work. Uh, Zura Polikashvili and uh, his uh, colleagues and team uh, has provided some excellent work in which I uh, also participate, especially in innovation and digital transformation. And the priorities for, uh, I, let me, let me uh, tell you the seven priorities of uh, the, 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 the UNWTO for the tourism recovery. First is to provide liquidity and protect jobs. So this goes under the respond uh, uh, group that I said before, provide liquidity and, pro and protect jobs. Of course, in countries like Greece and other countries that uh, we have suffered during the economic crisis, it's very difficult to provide liquidity and to protect jobs in tourism because uh, we don't have uh, so much money uh, kept uh, in our treasury for this. The second is to recover confidence through safety and security. So it's respond, provide, recover. Provide confidence through uh, safety and security. And then the third one is to the public and private collaboration for an efficient reopening. So uh, this was something that I was uh, 
presenting in all my uh, speeches and all the events, in, in, in all the work we've done in the ministry, without the private sector, the best government, even the best government would be uh, in any country, if there is no cooperation with the private sector, then tourism could not grow because the private sector puts the money, the entrepreneurs uh, put the money, uh, the entrepreneurs uh, want to make profit out of it, and then uh, the institution, the government, provides simplification of procedures so as the uh, private uh, tourism and entrepreneurs would grow. The fourth thing is to uh, open the borders with the responsibility. Of course, it, this is something that we cannot, uh, uh, there is no comment on that. If we don't have uh, safe borders and we cannot open the borders safely, we cannot have uh, tourism again. Harmonize and coordinate protocols and procedures. I will go on that later on because also uh, it was something that Istvan uh, mentioned and also uh, Lola mentioned before. And everybody said that we need to find a common approach with protocols of opening and the coordination and harmonization through around Europe. Uh, added value jobs through new technologies. This is something that I have learned during my work in uh, WTO. And uh, uh, I was uh, participating in a round table uh, last week with uh, commissioners uh, Bar Barney and Schmidt. Uh, we were discussing about skills, new skills in tourism. So uh, uh, new technologies provide the, the, the grounds for, uh, for the development and uh, innovation, new skills, vocational training into workers in tourism and new uh, professions that would be necessary for the tourism growth from now on uh, is something very important. And then the last one is innovation and sustainability as the new normal. I, I quite feel that uh, we had it as a, an old normal, so it exists, sustainability and innovation. So there, are, uh, let me throw in the discussion uh, some things to, to, to keep in mind, uh, to remember in the post COVID period. Number one uh, priority for tourists, safe and seamless travel, uh, travel. Safety, so number one is safety. We need to reassure the tourists, the visitors, the citizens, the EU citizens, that if we travel and we will travel again, we will do it safely. And for that, we need common approach and guidelines, protocols. This is how important, how much important is protocols for transport and safety regulations. Eastman, uh, said that this is very important and uh, we all understand why it is. The new emerging forms of tourism, slow tourism, is something that uh, we need to invest on. Uh, experiential tourism, authentic experiences. In Greece we have tried that. Uh, the, the, uh, the, we need we, we invested in thematic tourism. So we have provided authentic experiences, experiential tourism, slow tourism, and we have new forms of tourism that arise, like teletravel. I, I was, uh, uh, I, I was uh, reading the other day that in Mauritius, in Saudi Arabia, and even Hyatt, what they do is that they invite people, stay for months. What the, the best place to stay uh, for months and work is, is Greece and other countries, of course, in, the, in Europe. We <laughs> travel. We go and travel. And, uh, I'm sure if Lola and Elena invites me for uh, tele-traveling sometimes in the countries, I would uh, definitely go there with pleasure and stay for a couple of months and work with them and do some traveling. It, but of course, it, it assumes that we have a continued job to do and offer some things. Okay, so we have a, a, a phased approach for planning and activity for tourism. And I understand that we have some time, so I take more because we are not very many today in the discussion. So it's so first response. Now we are in the stage. Uh, I have presented some five R's like response, reset, restart, recovery, and renew. I mean, uh, things that the technocrats do do, do this uh, like. Uh, four T's and three C's and four B's and so five R's. The first is the response. Now we're in the phase that we need to respond. Remember the, in the beginning that I said, we need to respond. All non-essential travel is banned. So uh, I'm just going through. The objective is to keep ourselves and yourselves and everybody in the country safe. This is the situation now. 
we don't uh, we are not, not not we are not interested we don't care let's put it this way about tourism now we need to be safe because we, if we are not safe we cannot travel and we the message now is dream now and we travel later okay so we stay at home we do some vr realities and uh, uh, whatever we do and we just dream and stay safe uh, the, the citizens and our friends and our colleagues and all the people in europe and then we move to reset the, the non-essential travel, uh, it means for businesses or urgent matters, is still, uh, uh, is still banned. The, the objective is to, to keep European destination top of mind, our countries, the tourism destination top of mind, and to build advocacy and trust. Uh, the, message is that we, the, the message now is that only in Europe, or only in Greece, or only in France, or only in, uh, only in our countries, uh, it would be in the dream. So let's the dream now, we, and we travel later. And then we move to restart. Okay, uh, the broader travel restrictions are still might be in place, but local restrictions have been lifted. But we, we need to have in mind that more restrictions will come in the future. And maybe at any time uh, will be imposed. The, the, the objective now, and I come back to uh, domestic tourism, is to reconnect nationals with our countries. We need to connect ourselves with our countries and the uh, tourism destination within our countries. The message now is only in our country, we need to encourage other people and other tourists and tour operators, uh, tour operators around Europe. Uh, and uh, we need to... Uh, the, the visitors start to plan uh, short breaks and continue uh, thinking, but we started to plan. Then is the recovery. Of course, it's the domestic movement. The wider restrictions uh, would be lifted. Uh, we, we, uh, the message is only in our country, uh, we book short breaks and now, uh, okay, I'm finishing. Um, and uh, the last one is renew, the new market reinvigoration of the market, support of the white industry renewal, and uh, the emerging need of changing uh, visitor profiles and new forms of tourism. I have exceeded the 10 minutes. Elena, uh, um, would like to put- George, thank you so much for your, uh, yes, for your presentation. I note uh, that it's important um, for you, you stressed out to promote Europe as a tourist uh, destination globally, and this is even more important uh, now with the pandemic crisis. Uh, you noted that uh, the concerns of the people of tourism are well justified, the landscape of tourism has completely changed and the sector has collapsed. According to you, three things need to happen to respond on how to restart travel, to encourage domestic travel first, and then international tourism. And third, we need to uh, reimagine tourism, how it will give more than it takes to the society, the economy, and the environment. Last, uh, you presented the seven points um, proposed by UNWTO to restart tourism, which is indeed very important and provide a compass for our governments everywhere. Um, and um, uh, thank you so much. So we have now concluded uh, the first round. As you highlighted several critical issues to touch upon uh, uh, further, I would like to ask for your comments and to discuss a bit more about. We have uh, only three to five minutes. so. I will start with Lola uh, for her last uh, statement. Thank you, uh, Elena. I, I agree with everything you've said. As you know, the industry has been more united than ever. And, uh, you know, in Europe with the, the manifesto for jobs and growth, we've been actively advocating for all the principles that we've been mentioning. We're calling for same criteria, coordination, testing on departure and what else can we do? We agree and uh, we have you as uh, champions in the parliament and I really cannot thank you enough for all the support uh, in, in raising awareness of the sector and trying to, 
to boost it and, and try and you know, it's, it's already on the map, it's in the European map, but still it's not reflected in the budget. How unfortunate. So what else can we do in order to, to achieve what we are aiming for? I think something that I would like to add, it's the social impact of tourism. It is undoubtful. I mean, it's really, really, I mean, we have an, an opportunity now for governments to recognize the importance that it has as a driver of job creation and growth. We have the numbers there. I mean, numbers speak for themselves. We have an estimate, the worst case scenario, 174 million jobs at risk. This is a, a, a health crisis. It has become an economic crisis and it's going to probably be even stronger next year, but it is a social crisis as well. So uh, the engine of tourism and the, you know, it's, it's a mechanism to reduce poverty to uh, you know to increase the quality and, and enhance inclusivity uh, in, in society so I think we really need to you know the sector really needs the right assistance to bring back the million of jobs and for that as I said coordination is really really crucial the private sector has a very important role to play of course we are generating these jobs 80 percent of the participants in our sector as I mentioned are SMEs and, and we need, really need to think about what comes after the crisis. And, and of course, it depends very much on the support that governments are providing. So we will see at the time of the recovery, we need to see what's left and, and countries have reacted differently. And, uh, and that is going to have in, uh, an impact on, on the players that are left. So we are all connected. It is very important to connect the entire ecosystem we, I agree that we really need transparent communication to travelers. We, we need really to communicate in a much better way. And, uh, you know, if you ask me what are the challenges to achieve in the next weeks, midterm, next months, uh, borders to open over the next weeks and months, we really need to have borders open. As Jose Ramon was saying, and we've mentioned, we need to learn how to live with the virus. We cannot just wait for the panacea, for the vaccine. We need to coexist with the virus. And for that, we are suggesting testing. We have the example, for example, of uh, cruise liners. And, uh, you know, they actually had been nearly shut down since uh, March, but there are some limited operations that restarted uh, and that started in Europe and uh, a number of, uh, of our members, of course. And it's proven that through collaboration and commitment with the relevant authorities, these operations actually have provided some positive uh, experiences and examples on, on the broader restarting of, of the sector. And so we need to have simple processes in place, testing, no quarantine, only if tested positive, uh, track and trace apps, technology plays an important role here as well, uniform protocols uh, across the world, I mean, in Europe, simple to understand for people and businesses to put in place. We need countries to have a plan. I mean, destinations need to have a plan so that business can get organized, so that business can plan for the budget next year. We need countries, again, to change the mindset. So we need to contain the spread, but we need to live with the virus. And, uh, and then again, public and private coordination. We say public-private partnership. We also mention public, private, and community partnerships. So we cannot really forget that we are all a connected ecosystem. So with that, it's really like coordination and I cannot emphasize enough everything that we've been mentioning here today. However, we are still, of course, optimistic. We cannot, uh, you know, the sector is a sector that employed one out of 10, uh, you know, jobs in the planet, one out of four for the pa uh, past five years. So uh, it's a very, very resilient uh, sector. We are uh, adapting all the time. And uh, the reality is that people really want to travel and people dream of traveling. And so we really need to provide for, for that. And so I want to really leave a positive note. But again, thank you and keep on helping us in, in raising awareness of the importance of the sector. And uh, we really need to work together to bring back the millions of jobs at risk. And, uh, Actually, this is a domino effect, all the livelihoods that depend on, on this important and fascinating sector. So thank you, Efharistopoli. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, I will definitely keep uh, that it's a domino effect. I will definitely keep uh, 
that uh, we have to work private and public sector together. Uh, this is not only a health crisis, economic crisis, but a social crisis as well. There is a social impact, so we have to be very careful about that. And uh, let's go to uh, George uh, Dialas. George, please uh, tell me your please last comment. Two minutes because you took so long before, so I, <laughs> I summarize. I summarize. Uh, we have okay. Uh, we, we the objectives. What I said before for restart and recovery. First of all, is to build our national pride, the European, uh, the European pride, and the, the every country pride. To encourage responsible domestic travel for day trips in Europe must be safe, and in this environment we travel. And then we have to to reassure and take a responsible approach to attracting visitors, encouraging, of course, safe and responsible behavior when we travel, when tourists travel. To gather intelligence, which is uh, innovation, and new skills, uh, new uh, technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, the digital transformation in tourism, and engage with industry and partners to gather intelligence, so as to inform messaging and social media and media approach. Extend the tourism season. This is what we have done and we had good, great results in Greece. The seasonal spread, looking beyond summer, 365 days of tourism. And last, provide authentic experiences. Again, this is something within our strategy that provided results, offering unique and authentic experiences to visitors and engaging them in uh, thematic tourism activities. Uh, this is something uh, uh, that needs to be done, slow tourism, experiential tourism, as I said before. And of course, we, we need to keep in mind that uh, for uh, the, 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 the European Commission, the European Union, the governments, what they need to do is to protect jobs, provide liquidity, and provide new skills, the, the, the opportunity for providing new skills. And also, uh, we need for us tourists, and I would say that uh, uh, now also because I'm working with the region of North Aegean Islands, and this is uh, how to provide authentic experiences and experiential tourism. And for us tourists, is first of all, to stay safe. For us potential tourists and citizens, stay safe. What I said before, we can dream now, just dream, gathering information, imagining how the travel would be. Uh, having our will to travel, and then we travel later. And to remember that, uh, as I said in my, the beginning of my presentation, is now we respond, we think, we dream, then we need to kickstart the, the, the mechanism, the cooperation, the industry will kickstart. But when we kickstart and we start building, we need to reimagine, because as I said, tourism, would not be again the same as BC because after COVID, everything has changed and we need to move forward and we will have success on that. I would like to thank you uh, for your uh, uh, invitation. And uh, you know that uh, you are always be my, uh, you know, like uh, the, 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 the one that I admire as a minister. And of course, I, I, I appreciate and it be, it's be an honor to be to, to be uh, your friend. Thank you so much, George. Thank you so much. I would uh, keep a few things that you said, safety and security, um, protect jobs and provide liquidity in the business, sustainability and innovation. Um, Jose Ramon, the floor is yours. Yes. Thank you very much. I will try to be as brief as I can. Then for me, there are four key points so important to keep in mind in order to make possible everything that we are talking about this morning. First of all, coordinator measures in the EU. We have to be always coordinated. And this is linked to the second one. The commission should be stronger when they making sure that member states adopt coordinated measures and all, not only launching recommendations. If you only recommend, everything will be that recommendation. If you don't say what you have to do, people will do whatever they think 
and maybe they are not on the right thing. And you will need some experience in, the, in, in some time in the future in order to see if they are on the right or, or the wrong side. That is the way the commission should be stronger and not say what I suppose you should to do, but even you should do that because it's what we are always thinking in the main thing, in the same way. Third, common you test protocols for travel in the EU in order to avoid quarantines. As what I said, we had to take decision in order of scientific decisions or evidences in the epidemiologic evolution, not only because of the political uh, criteria. Uh, I remember, and you will remember as well, uh, Elena, what the director of the Euro Control said in one of the commission, and they told, absolutely agree with him, that in some cases, most that we wanted to believe that the political are taking decision, the politicians are taking political decision and not uh, evidences decision. That is what we have to do. And finally, give confidences and trust to the visitors, to the tourists. That's the way. If we are not working in the same line, maybe some people who is living in Greece or Italy or Spain, we won't have the same conditions that people who is living in the, in the north of uh, Europe, maybe in Germany or even in Belgium or even in, I don't know, where uh, any, any country, maybe they think, here in our country, we are taking this decision to make a PCR before or after uh, taking a plane, or we are doing different tests anyway. But for example, in Spain, I will say my case, in Spain, nobody is doing nothing that this is the case that is not so safe Are we are doing what we are doing in Germany. This is absolutely catastrophic for all of us because the the touristic sector has done a big, big effort and has been doing big amount of investment in order to prevent that and give confidence to the tourist, tourist people who is flying to our countries. That's the way it's absolutely, absolutely important to give confidence, to give trust, and that has to be in a, uh, how to say, in a transversal position because we had to take the same decisions. It was supposed to be done. Thank you. That is what I might thought, Elena. Thank you so much, uh, Ramon. I believe we all agree on the importance of having clear and common rules in the uh, European Union, as well as more cooperation, common approaches and responses. Not political decisions, but more uh, to the point, decisions to help uh, not only the economical, the health, uh, but also the social crisis that we are living. One lesson we have learned from this crisis is that no one can do it alone, <clears throat> not even the most powerful. Collective responses are more effective than uh, unilateral efforts in dealing with crisis and for the benefits of all. This is exactly why I had proposed <clears throat> early in the first pandemic wave the need to have mandatory tests upon departure in the European Union and common rules for travel and movement. And we insisted also in our resolution. This is also why I insisted as well since 2019. And I'm very happy that was included in both European Parliament resolutions for tourism, the creation of the first time of a European tourism crisis management mechanism. You remember, Ramon, how hard we work for that to make them understand why we need that. With such a mechanism, we can deal more effectively with current and future crises of all kind to safeguard travel and tourism that indeed can become strong accelerator for sustainable development and employment. So we keep that sustainability and innovation is very important. Safety security is very important. Private and public uh, sector collaboration is very important. Um, obligation to, to, to follow measures and not just suggestions because anybody can do anything that he thinks is right. Uh, and very important to provide liquidity to the business, especially the SMEs, and uh, protect jobs. So 
Once again, I would like to thank you all uh, for your contributions today and for giving great value to today's discussion. I look forward to working further with all of you for several issues and proposals towards our common goal for making travel and tourism strong again. We will be in touch soon. Thank you so much, uh, all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Remember you very that the much. weather is always nice in Greece. <laughs>